rated M for mature. Audio is everything. The sound of Gears 2 is crunchy. Uh, in one word, I'd say meaty. I, I talked to Mike Larson, who's the audio director on the project. I'm like, Mike, it's got to be crunchier. He's like, what does that even mean? I'm like, it just needs to have that, that crunch. See, we're close. He likes crunchy, I like meaty. I think being meaty and crunchy is really the same idea of really pushing the sounds you know, to their ultimate potential. It's, it's like the world. It's heavy. It's, it's grounded. It's substantial. You can't have thick characters, big monsters you know, heavy environments, grounded environments, and have tinny, light sounds. It has to, they have to carry their own weight as well. It needs to hit. It needs to have punch. And it needs to just deliver and, and solidify what the entire experience is. Uh, for Gears of War 2, we ended up re-recording almost all of the audio. I think about 85% of the audio is new. We recorded all new weapons, all new ambience, all new voiceover, and all new music. Uh, you know, the Lancer sound effect is new, it's punchier. The Hammer Burst has an all new sound. Yeah, even the bullet impacts have been punched up. In keeping the world of Gears very grounded and heavy, we wanted to make sure that the weapons were very tangible and bullet-based. All of the source material is real guns, real explosives. You don't have to start dealing with that whole like kind of Mars ray gun, you know, woo 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 type audio. And uh, that's one of the reasons Gears feels so good. It feels so real and tangible. A lot of the fun of a weapon is purely down to how it sounds. It's about that feedback mechanism about the rumble in the controller, but that, that sound is what really sells it to you. It's the funny thing about like Gatling guns is if you ask a person what their Gatling gun sound is, each person has a different one. So mine is like but other people are like and it's just a fun exercise to try with your friends sometime. It's great at parties, really. Well, the Gatling gun is one of those stories where Cliff really had uh, a lot to do with it. Um, there's certain sounds in the game where he really wants it a certain way. Mike Larson and I basically just went back and forth five or six times on the mulcher to try and get the perfect audio. It was never good enough. It was always like, no, you know, it, needs, it sounds too much like a drum, or it sounds too much like a card in the spoke of a bike wheel. It's a heavy gun. It needs to feel powerful at the same time. You still need to hear all the bullet sounds kind of cycling in there. I put together like six brand new Gatling gun sounds, and I asked Cliff to come down to my office. So he sat behind me, and he's like, okay, get ready to shoot. And, and, he, and, and, and I hit play, and he actually started acting like he was shooting it. Okay, it's, it's heavy, and it's... He's like, no, that's not cool. We went to the next one, and it's just going like this. By the third or fourth one, he's like, yes, that's it. And so he actually was like imitating, you know, the, the usage of it, you know, to help him uh, conceptualize, you know, its sound within its context before it was actually put in the game. And that's how we ended up defining the, the final sound of the Gatling game. I love the voiceover recording process. It's just, it's one of the things that I feel kind of privileged that, you know, as a producer, not a lot of producers get to do that. Oh yeah, fried grubs. The locusts are actually voiced by, you know, normal, regular voice actors, and they do really great monster voices. But what's amazing to me is that they have almost complete control over their phlegm in their throat. In addition to the vocal tonality, there's, mm, <clears throat> like it's really, both disgusting and yet intriguing <laughs> because the director can actually say yeah I just need a little bit more flam <laughs> or a little less flam and they can do this really strange like they just bring it out of nowhere and, and, and do this amazing stuff that basically sounds really cool like you don't even need processing but when you're done you pretty well want to throw up yeah <laughs> is a brutal kind of you know dark experience but there's also a lot of heart that's there and I think it comes through in the music. When you have a theme like Hope Runs Deep um, you definitely are trying to incorporate that into the music and trying to have that sort of uh, you can, it can't be depressing you know it has to have its, its upbeat patriotic moments it's, it's sort of you know driving battle tracks and those sorts of things so you definitely want to have that carry you through that you feel like you know, you're fighting the good fight and that you want the music to, to bring you along on that trip. Scoring for Gears is a lot, actually, a lot different than scoring for a film. We were fans of C. Jablonski's work from his, you know, work in Transformers as well as his work in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
and uh, he's a very prolific uh, A-list Hollywood uh, musician. The score for Gears of War 2 is cinematic in, in uh, respect of the instrumentation I chose to use. To really, you can do effects with the orchestra where you can't tell, is that an orchestra or what, what is that? You know, depending on where the string players place their bows on the strings, or you can just have them, you know, they don't like to do this because it ruins their instrument, but you can have them banging on their instruments, making cool noises. There's that whole factor when you get goosebumps that you can't force, you can't fake it. And once we had acquired uh, some of the early tracks from Steve Jablonski, I put it in my little memory card, I put it in my car, I was driving home one day, you know, and wonderful afternoon, top down, game's looking great, feeling good, and the music started building to a crescendo. And I looked down at my arm and I actually caught myself getting goosebumps. And I swear to God, you can't fake that, you can't force that.